Man, I got mixed emotions about this one. This video is brought to you by TatumReport.com. TatumReport.com. Get the link in the description section. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications anytime I go live or make a video. Make sure you're still subscribed to my channel. Hit the join button so you can join the Tatum squad. Like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Let's get into this. So I watched the full leaked George Floyd body-worn camera video of the incident leading up to his you-know-what. Now, I have mixed emotions about this. I'm not going to lie, man. I have mixed emotions. I can see it from his perspective, and I can see it from the police perspective. Let me start with his perspective. Now, I think that it is reprehensible for people to be using drugs. Clearly, the autopsy showed that he was on methamphetamine and fentanyl at lethal dosages. That's exactly why he was acting the way he was acting. But I do understand because I have family members that are on drugs, currently on drugs, was on drugs, died from drugs. My stepfather died from a heroin overdose. So I understand what it's like to be around somebody or what it is like for people to be addicted to a substance. And, and I believe that there is a level of uh, compassion that could be had that can lead to a better outcome and a better situation. Not saying the officers were right or wrong in this situation, but I can see that George Floyd is definitely struggling from some type of ingestment or he has ingested uh, a lethal dosage of a drug that's causing him to be radical, causing him to be crazy, emotional, and unstable. Now, that's his perspective. Now, the police perspective. I mean, what do you expect them to do? They get to a gentleman who they don't know, who they have no reason to know, that is just committed a crime in a convenience store or in a, in a, in a place of business. He's outside. He's not complying at the, at the, at the beginning of the video. He's not complying. At one point he didn't even show his hands. The officer had to pull his gun out uh, to threaten him to, to display his hands. Now he's what we call passive aggressive. That means that he's not overtly doing any action that's aggressive to the police officer, like punching them, hitting them or whatever, but he's passively not following directions. That is some of the most dangerous situations you can put yourself in or be in as a police officer. When somebody's passively not uh, complying, then they end up getting a weapon and then you hurt. So they gave him commands. I think uh, I'm totally cool with that, 100%. I never cursed on duty, so I, I, don't, I don't really think that it's necessary to curse at people. But if that's the way you conduct yourself, that's the way you conduct yourself. It's not against the law. Now, um, I think that the officers did what they're supposed to do. He was resisting arrest at the door when he was parked on the side of the road. And you'll, guys, you'll see the full video. It's on Tatum Report. You can go watch the full video. Obviously, I can't play it here. But you can see he was resisting arrest. He wasn't complying. He was incoherent. He gets out of the car. He's still incoherent. He's not following directions. He's up and down, emotionally here, emotionally there. He gets to the patrol car. Um, he's resisting arrest. He don't want to get in the car. He's not making a statement and then moving with it. He's com he's com inconsistently back and forth. I don't want to get in the car. I'm claustrophobic. Well, I'm cool. Well, you was totally fine in the driver's side, the driver's seat of that other vehicle. Now you want to get in the back of the police car. Now you somehow, somehow you're claustrophobic. You've been arrested several times before. So he's, he's, he's having these emotional drama that the police officers are observing. Um, he's, he's not complying. He's, he's not seeming to want to ever get in the car. If they just let it go, he'll never get in the car. Some, some people may think that, no, he would. No, he would never get in the car. He will make an excuse all the way to the end. Now, when he was in the car, they put him in the car. He kicks himself out of the car, tell them, I want to lay on the ground. That's information that nobody's talking about. He pretty much told the police officers that he would rather lay on the ground. So they laid him on the ground, not against his will, not malicious force, but they did what he felt he wanted to do because he was so non-compliant in the vehicle. Now, obviously they called the uh, paramedics to come and see him because they knew he was high on something. Erratic behavior is very consistent with the way he was, he was acting. Now, that's the synopsis of the entire video. But let me add uh, something to the very end of this, which is a result of George Floyd dying that I think people aren't talking about it. I spoke about it in my first video. Let's talk about the, the excited delirium phenomenon. Now, one of the officers who was a rookie, matter of fact, two officers were rookies, and then there were two officers that were on the department longer than rookie status. Um, officer Chauvin, who was the main police officer involved in this, was on for several years, over a decade. So um, he has a lot of experience he was the lead police officer. I think he was even the FTO of one of the, the young police officers. So while he was on the ground having these experiences, when they called medical assistance, uh, the younger officer alluded to, according to his lawyer, that George Floyd needed to be rolled to his side because he could be experiencing excited delirium. 
Now, if those of you don't know what excited delirium is, it's pretty much when you get on a, a, a upper, a drug that's an upper, like methamphetamines, like fentanyl, and it gets your heart rate up, you get, uh, uh, you know, very aggravated, you, you get superhuman strength, and then you begin to crash, kind of like a, a sugar crash. You begin to crash all the way to the point that you die. You never stop crashing. You go into cardiac arrest. It's called excited delirium. They teach us in the academy way back in 2010. Um, I'm sure they, they've been teaching it all over the country. That was an indication that George Floyd could have been experiencing excited delirium, which had nothing to do with the knee. I'm not saying that that's the cause of it. We'll find that in court. But what I'm saying is that it possibly had nothing to do with the knee. It had everything to do with the drugs he ingested, which caused him to crash and burn, pretty much. And, and, and I'm not trying to be offensive, but that's kind of the term that we use. So those things are important to note on top of the video that you saw, on top of the response that the police had, and people don't know this, but I think it's invaluable to talk about this. One of the officers did conduct CPR on George Floyd while he was in the back of the ambulance waiting for them to hook up all the, the vital cords or whatever they had to, to do to treat him. He was giving them chest compressions and CPR. So the myth that nobody helped him, the myth that everybody should go to prison is that is just a myth. All the other officers, in my personal opinion, should not be held accountable for the knee and, and, and Officer Chauvin. Now, Officer Chauvin is in a pickle because what he did visibly did not look appropriate. I mean, as a former police officer, and I taught new officers how to become officers. I was the FTO as well. It does not seem to be appropriate. When you got your knee on the man's neck, no matter how much pressure you're putting on him, you, you gotta, at some point, you kind of got to play to the camera. I don't, know, I don't understand how police officers don't understand this. You got to play to the camera to a certain degree. You got to be communicate with him like, hey, man, look, I, I took my knee off of you, but you started acting up. I'm putting my knee back on you because you're not. Okay, I'll get off. If you start moving, I'm going to go back on. Play that game, even though you know it's bull crap. Play the game so uh, on Monday morning when people begin to evaluate you, they, at least it looks like you were attempting to work with him instead of looking like you're just kneeling in the death. Now, what I will say is that um, he's in a dilemma because – he could be charged and he could not be charged. And people aren't ready to entertain that. If excited delirium type scenario occurred, he died from heavy doses of fentanyl and methamphetamines. It's going to have nothing to do with Officer, Officer Chauvin's actions. Then he's not going to get charged. If they decide that Officer Chauvin's actions exacerbated excited delirium or exacerbated, he had a reason to know that it was causing the death of George Floyd then um, he's going to be in trouble. But I think this video was very revealing. It showed a lot of context to what was going on. People like myself, Candace Owens, and others were already telling people that he had resisted, that it wasn't just an innocent black man doing nothing, crying for his mama. It was a lot of other stuff involved. Now, he was high on drugs, but they also had no reason to uh, baby him and put a pacifier in his mouth and rub his back while he go to jail. So I hope this video will give you some context. TatumReport.com will have the full video. You can watch this. It's like eight minutes long. You can go on there. The link is in the description section. But I can talk about this for another hour, but I want you to watch the rest of my videos. Go in the comment section and comment. Let me know what you thought about the video. Are you conflicted? Is this cut and dry? Did this open your eyes to something? Did this verify something for you or did it do nothing? Let me know in the comment section. Like and subscribe to the channel. Visit the Officer Tatum store where you get all the cool merch. Y'all know what it is. See you on the next one. I'm out. Thank you.